Welcome back to day number four of the five day book selling workshop. Hopefully everybody's gotten their account set up. You're going through, you're scanning, you're analyzing items. You're playing around with Scout IQ. You're pumped up, ready to make this happen. Now we need to talk about how to source books. This is the fun part. This is yep. where the rubber meets the road. And there's probably, I mean, there's gotta be 40 or 50 different ways that we utilize. So many ways. To source books. Thousands of ways. And tons of other, other items as well. Like it doesn't, the fun doesn't stop with just yep. books. That's how we start. But today we're gonna share our top five ways That's to it? start. Yeah, just, just five right now because right. I might I might leak out a few extra. We, we definitely can. But the thing that I that I'm worried about is I know when I was new to selling on mm -hmm. Amazon or even when I started eBay back in the day, like everyone always like said, like, do all these different things. Yeah. And then guess what? It's paralysis by analysis. Is that the, yep. the saying you yep. just get so overwhelmed? So we want to share five concrete, actionable easy ways that you could start sourcing books yep. um, to start finding inventory. And that's the name of the game when it comes to selling books or selling anything on Amazon. How do you make more money? How you do you sell more, more items? Find more inventory, buy more inventory. And it's not just about buying more inventory, right? A book isn't just a book. It's all about how's the sales rank? How's the profit? Yep. How's the ROI? How's the turnover? And we talked a lot about this in our, you know, our initial training for day number three. But uh, overall, the goal should be to find more books, find more inventory, considering it has good ROI, turnover, yep. e-score, profit. Exactly. Follow those triggers. Use the good good sales rank books. Send in stuff that turns green, you know, um, and you'll be safe. If you send in a bunch of red stuff and you're like, I said it was profitable and it doesn't work out for you, it's because you're not sending in good stuff. Send in fast selling stuff with good profit, you'll be okay. And I want to say right now, be sure if you haven't yet, go follow Avery on his YouTube channel, on Instagram, over at Roamer the Roamer. Roamer the Roamer on everything. Likewise, for my people, follow Steve. If you're not following him already, uh, you guys should be subbed. Yeah, we've got you know social media, YouTube. We have free Facebook groups, so definitely check it all out. And make sure if you haven't yet, once you get to day five, you'll be ready. But get yourself a free 14-day free trial to go to Lister so you could start rocking and rolling. But let's jump right into things. Let's get into the, the you know, the fun stuff everybody wants to know about. How Let's do you start do sourcing books? And the, the first way that I always recommend, because I'm all about being on a budget, right? Mm -hmm. When I start a business, I, I'm not always, like, I've started a lot of business over the years. And when I first started business, I'm like, am I even going to like this? Is this going to be a good fit yep. for me? Like, is this legit? And yep. we could tell you all day long until the sun comes up, like, you know, sell books. It's great. But you don't. Some of you guys might not even know who we are. And like, are these guys full of, you know, full of baloney? Like, does this even work? You've got yeah. to try it for yourself. So Should let's be skeptical. I, and the last thing I would want is for you to spend a bunch of money, buy all the supplies, set up an LLC, and then do nothing. Prove to yourself that this works. Prove to yourself you can turn a profit and then reinvest in your business. Start growing from there. So exactly. Great. So, so the first thing I would say is start sourcing inventory. This is tip number one. Start sourcing inventory from around your house. Yep. I think, I don't know if it was Gary Vaynerchuk, but somebody was like, the average person has like $5,000 worth of profit in their house. Yeah, Gary, v, Gary V talks about that. Yeah, I don't know how true that is, but most people think books are junk. And a yep. lot of them, I'm not talking from like a knowledge standpoint, from like a monetary standpoint, most of them aren't worth money. Yep. But you'd be shocked, some of your old textbooks, some of your even fiction, nonfiction yeah. book sets. I'd say your house, most people's houses have higher percent profit books than all the strategies we're going to talk about. And the reason for that is nobody has scanned through your books yet. When we tell talk about these other strategies, there's probably other people that have been through the course or maybe they heard about it or maybe they've been selling books for a few years. They have access to those books too, but nobody has access to the books at your house. So yeah. generally you'll, you'll, you'll find 15, 20, 30% of the books at your house are good to sell on Amazon. And also you don't have to worry about, you know, let's be real, like, and we're probably gonna, you know, flip over to some uh, different clips of like thrifting. And I think you have a clip you wanted to share of being at a library yep. sale. Um, a while back, but um, when you're out at a library sale or a thrift store, these different methods we're going to talk about, you got to worry about like competition or people looking at you. Like you feel like maybe people are judging you. I don't know about you. you oh, for I... sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I first started, <laughs> I was scared, dude, I was so sketch. I was in this Goodwill and I was scanning and uh, I was scanning with my phone. I, did, I didn't even buy the Bluetooth scanner yet. And my energy was just so off because I felt like I was doing something bad. Illegal, and right? <laughs> dude, the manager was walking by and was like looking at me like, what is this kid doing? And I was like looking back like, yeah. you know, and I scanned Cover like up. one shelf. And it was, like in hindsight, it was so stupid what he did because I purchased a whole cart filled with 
crappy books. Yeah. I was buying all the thrift stores books and they weren't even good because I didn't understand the stuff we're teaching you. I didn't understand sales rank. I didn't understand e-score. Um, I didn't understand if a book turned green, it was good or red, it was bad. Like I literally, I think at the time I wasn't even using like a scanning app. Maybe I was, but anyway, back to the point, like I filled a whole cart of books that were trash. Yeah. And he got mad at me. He kicked me out of the store. When, what? when I filled up a cart, with, he thought I was getting one over on him. He was like, oh, this kid's making a bunch of money off the books. In hindsight, I was doing the store a favor because I was buying all their trash books, yeah. you know? And so uh, that was like one of my stories where like the only, that's the only time it's ever happened to me. And it was because I was so weird about it. And you'll feel weird the first energy, time. Yeah. Get, get, you'll get over it, but just know that like what you're doing is good. You're, you're buying books. You're getting them back in the system. You're going to provide the book to a reader somewhere in the middle of Idaho like you're doing good things, so don't feel bad about it. Yeah, and speaking of doing, you know, doing that, was that the employee or the manager? I think it was the manager, yeah. Yes, friends and family, right? Let your friends and family know, hey, I'm, I'm starting up a book business if you're not too shy about it. I know sometimes in the beginning, you're like, I don't wanna tell anyone, yeah. which is fine, but you know, ask your friends, ask your family, like, hey, do you have any books lying yeah. around? Because a lot of people, you know, they've got a whole bunch of books, a bookshelf. I, they just want it gone, but they're yeah. big, bulky, heavy. Yeah. Like, they don't want to deal with it. Like, if you can come and just, like, say, hey, I'll take them all or give you a couple bucks. Mm -hmm. You want to yeah. touch on that a well, little bit? Well, I mean, bit? books are just heavy, man. Like, everybody, all booksellers want a bunch of books until you have too many books to deal with. One day, if you take this business seriously, you're going to have 20, 30 boxes of books that a library, a thrift store somebody wants you to take and on that fourth box your back is going to burn and you're going to be like oh my gosh what am i doing or you're going to be in a house filled with books <laughs> you agree to take them all away when you feel that remember that feeling that you you feel like oh my gosh this is overwhelming there's so many boxes of books i don't know what to do with them remember that feeling because that's the feeling that everybody who's uh, who has too many books has to deal with and you are the solution to their problem we'll yeah. get more into those techniques but just remember that feeling because while you're looking at these as golden nuggets, you're looking at these as like dollar bills, other people are looking at these as like a bunch of weight they have to carry. They're looking at it as a problem. So yeah. remember, books are a problem for a lot of people. You're the solution and you can turn those books into dollars. Yeah, I was gonna move right into sharing like four of my top secret tips for thrift stores, but I wanna skip that and segue okay. into a really great app that I gotta credit you about. You yeah. taught me about this app. And I want to ask everybody who here would love to be able to start their book business by getting hundreds, if not thousands of books for coming free. directly to you for free yeah. or you go pick them up for free. I don't know. I would. Right. Yeah. And uh, when I when I first taught Iris, my girlfriend, I used to we used to live in Miami together. I'm, I'm here in Connecticut now. But I tell everyone I brought Miami back to Connecticut. <laughs> so, you know, I locked her down, brought her back here. When she started her book business, and um, she's not doing it anymore because she's got a new job working mm -hmm. for the state, just to, to be perfectly transparent. But when she was running her book business in Miami, she put out an ad on Nextdoor, okay? Tell everyone about the Nextdoor app because you have free, helped. Free ad, right? She didn't pay for it. No, free. But yeah, you've yeah. helped so many people make money. And I took that and gave it to her. Yeah. And she made hundreds of dollars off of it yeah. the first week. So Nextdoor is an app that allows you to verify where you live. So you sign up for Nextdoor. They send you a letter in the mail which proves that you live in this zip code. Once you prove that, that's a barrier to entry, you can post within that app. It's like a social media app. You can hire work. It's not really made for business. It's more for like community, right? Or a yeah. little, little bit of business interaction. But Most basically, community, yeah. yeah, it's a community-based app. Everybody knows that you're nearby. And what you can do is provide value, post pictures of yourself with books. You can put an ad. He's calling it an ad, but it's free. What you do is you just put, hey, I will pick up all your books at no charge and I run a book business and I'll get all the books back into the hands of readers. Any books that I don't sell online for a profit, you don't have to say that, but I like to be transparent. Um, I'm going to give to Goodwill or Salvation Army or use bookstore. So what you're doing is you're providing value to the community by taking the books that aren't being read. You're taking them off the shelf and you're putting them back into the hands of readers and you're getting paid for it the whole time. Yeah. And this is a great method to get tons and tons and tons of books. Every single person I've ever talked to have done this has found books. Sometimes yeah. it takes a little bit of time, yeah. right? You will have, the funny thing is when, when my girlfriend was doing it, she was like, oh, there's already other ads out there. Like I'm yep. not going to get calls. She got calls. Yep. And what I've actually done um, inside of uh, my community, Reselling Freedom, what I did is I created 13 different templates inside of Canva. Have you used Canva before to create graphics and stuff? Nope. Oh, it's so it's pretty much like a cloud-based like graphic design. Mm -hmm. You can log in. I've created a whole bunch of templates that everybody could use. So if anyone is here 
uh, in reselling freedom, go into the template section. I have literally ads, business cards you could use, templates, yep. and you just plug and play, switch out your business name for it. Put those on Facebook Marketplace too. Craigslist, maybe. I don't know if people yeah. still use Did, any Anywhere Craigslist. you can post them, Craigslist is a great place to get books. We'll talk more about those strategies. But uh, one more pro tip with that is do it every week. Don't do it one time and be like, oh, it didn't you work. You have to refresh it, repost refresh it. Refresh it, post on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. Like Steve's over here. He makes a video for Instagram. He posts on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. He posts it on all the platforms. He makes one piece of content that he spreads across all platforms. If you're going to post one on, on Craigslist, post, post it on Facebook Marketplace. Post it on Nextdoor. Post it on your personal Facebook page. Post it everywhere and do it every week. If you and do pick that, up your damn phone. I hate to say it like that, but I had friends who do it and they're like, yeah, like I'm getting calls, but like I'm not picking up and I yeah, call yeah. back and they don't like, you got to pick up your phone yeah. when they call. Like that yeah. lead is hot. <laughs> Reply to the comments, you know, interact with people. And then on next door, you can actually get momentum. So when one, when you go pick up books from somebody, from Susie, pull your phone out with Susie and all the books and be like, hey, I'm with Susie in the community, zip code 37205, wherever you're at. And be like, hey, I'm here in Nashville, you know, and take a selfie with her, all the books. And then I guarantee you that'll lead to like 10 more people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know? That's so, a great tip. Social proof. And again, Facebook Marketplace as well. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but you can use Facebook Marketplace to get books locally. Yeah. Great opportunity because the competition's way lower. Yeah. But you could also hand pick books to source on Facebook Marketplace. You pay for shipping, they'll ship it directly to you. That's a form of online arbitrage, a mm -hmm. bit more advanced. Yep. I, I probably wouldn't. And generally, Facebook Marketplace people know the value for their books, so they want a little bit more. But next door yeah. people are more like, oh, this person has a book business. They're going to get my books back in the hands of readers. Therefore, they give you their books for free. Yeah. And you're driving across town. You're picking their books up. So you should 100% take their books for free. You don't have to pay for books. It's a lot of work to get these. So don't feel bad for taking somebody else's books that aren't being read and giving them to people who will read, read them and making money in between. Yeah, and there's a lot of books out there, really stupid, just weird niche books. Honestly, like mm -hmm. weird books. Yeah. Like some of the books that my mom picks up because she's been doing this yeah. for a while. I the mean, I couldn't even better. tell you about some of these books. Like some of these weird, just really odd, unique, obscure, just like, you're just like, what? Who the heck would want this? Those are the books that do well. Exactly. It's the books that are like mass produced, paperbacks, you know yep. all about it. It's like- Harry Potter. Yeah, it's like a lot of those Twilight. aren't really worth that much money. So yep. look for the weird stuff. Now, let's uh, let's talk about thrift stores a little bit. I've got four tips. We all know we should be going to thrift stores, right? Now, as a prerequisite, let's talk about, because I know you, you um, You've talked about this a lot, mapping out like a thrift store route, how to find thrift stores, like how, mm -hmm. how can folks find thrift stores near them and figure out which ones to go to? And yep. then I'm going to get into four of my, my top secret, I don't know if they're top secret, but four tips. Best thing to do is go on your phone, go to Google Maps and just type in thrift stores and put a pin at every thrift store around you. Then type in used bookstore, put a pin for every used bookstore around you. You got Second and Charles on the East Coast. You got Boomerang Books if you're up near Boston. You got Powell's Books on the West Coast. You got Half Price Books. You got McKay's if you're in the ah, South. I was going to say McKay's. You're I've never been to a McKay's. All, all over the place. You got used bookstores. You got Savers thrift stores up here. <sighs> Savers. Yeah, out West, you got, I think they have Savers out West too. Down South, we don't. We got Goodwill, Salvation Army. You got all these different places. So map out and then libraries on top of that. Pro tip, like if you're up in the Northeast, you're spoiled rotten. Every single library has an ongoing library sale. If you're in the South, it's like 50-50. But um, call the libraries, call the libraries, see if they have an ongoing sale. That's just like a small book section that, and sometimes it's huge, but a lot of times it's just like one or two shelves of books that they have for sale. And make a map of like 20 or 30 places. And I'm stepping in the territory where I might overwhelm them a little bit because I'm saying put 20 different locations on your map. But the reason why I do it this way is like you have no excuse. If you go into a location and the books suck, meaning you scan 200 books and you get nothing, that's probably a pretty bad spot. All you have to do is get in your car and drive to the next location and start scanning again. So get all those locations we just said, uh, thrift stores, used bookstores, and libraries. Those are the top three. I mean, there's other places we could go to, yeah. but that, that'll cover your bases. Yeah, exactly. And it's a lot of trial and error, and I'll, I'll jump to this right now. One of the tips is when you're new to selling books or just going thrifting, again, Goodwill, Salvation Army, Savers, uh, there's a lot of thrift stores. When you're new, there's a lot of experimentation in terms of what days should I go? Like in my area, Savers, there's a couple of days I know they don't put on yep. inventory, so I ain't going to be over there, right? Yep. Um, 
one tip I can give, this is what my mom did. She got herself like a little tiny journal. She would bring yeah. it in her car. And when she would visit different thrift stores, she would write down a note. How many did I find? What mm -hmm. was the time? How much profit I made? And over time, she started to learn what days, what times yep. were best. Talk to the staff, the employees, ask them, hey, when do you bring out books? Introduce yourself. My yep. mom, she's she's funny. Like yeah. she'll bring donuts and like, you that's know. The, that's the best, best thing you can do is build relationships, go to the same places, learn the cadence of the thrift store, learn the cadence of the library. The biggest challenge for me traveling all the time. When I first started this business, I was living in my car. I traveled all the way to California, up to Washington, back all the way across to Portland, Maine, all the way down. And my biggest struggle was I'd walk into a place and I'm like, I don't know when they restock. I don't know the manager. Um, I don't know the newest colors, what, what inventory is new, what's old. So many nuances, but the mama profits of the towns I went to, they, <laughs> they knew, oh, what's this kid doing? He's going in on a Wednesday. The books were put out on Tuesday. What a punk. Exactly. What was what punk doing? And, you know, I was scanning the, the leftovers of, of all their books. I, yeah, I was getting new stores every day, but own your city. Know what time the new books come out. Know the managers. It might feel weird. I felt weird doing this starting out, but uh, bring coffee, you know, bring donuts, do that stuff. It, it feels weird to like gift someone you don't know, but trust me, like if you say nice things to people and you bring them food and you actually have a good heart, like people will reciprocate well. And this is a, another tip. Some of the thrift stores don't really like this, so you gotta be respectful. But when new inventory comes out, when Goodwill is bringing out that blue bin, mm -hmm. you remember, right? When you sit the thrift stores hard all the yep. time, we source from a lot of different places now. I just forced myself now. back there and find the blue bins yeah. myself. You wanna hear a funny story? What's that? So at a Goodwill, this is funny. I'm curious what you folks would do. So you know the big blue bins where they come wheeling out and there's like six yep. carts on it where they get filled up with books? Trust me, you want to attack those bins because that's the newest inventory. Yep. The newest inventory is always the best. Always the best. Folks might think, I'm going to look for the color because there's typically a color coordination like red, blue, green, and mm -hmm. every week they change it. And some of them do half off. It depends where you live. Right. Um, a lot of people are always asking, hey, what's the oldest color? Because I want to get 50% off on that. Mm -hmm. No, that's been scanned through a million times. Yep. You still might find some low-hanging fruit, but you're going to find things that make a couple bucks. Right. Ex of course, there's exceptions to the rule. Maybe someone like messes something up. Or yeah, yeah scan right. it. But uh, non barcode books, stuff like there's that. There's this guy who used to always, he would come in with a stool and he would park his stool in front of the new cart that comes out. Mm -hmm. And when my mom or anybody would go to scan the, the books and stuff, he would give everybody dirty <laughs> looks. Like he would claim the cart. What would you do in that situation? <laughs> I mean, he's doing, he's, he's a he business He claimed man. it, man. Yeah, I would kick he over. He brought his stool. Kick over that stool as hard as I can. And start <laughs> scanning those books. Yeah, people get intense with this they business, They get aggressive. Guys. We haven't even gotten into library sales yet, but I mean, library sales have a lot of fresh inventory that no one's seen before. And when you let 20 booksellers charge in there, especially in New Jersey, yeah, those people don't play around. I had someone the other day ask me, Avery, how many books? It was an Instagram DM. How many books should I expect to get or purchase when I go to a thrift store? My answer was anywhere from zero to 50. Yeah. <laughs> like, honestly, like I've gone to a thrift store tons of times, came up with nothing. Why? Yeah. Maybe they didn't have new inventory. Maybe a competitor beat me. Uh, maybe I was just not looking hard yeah. enough and scanning enough inventory. And then other times I've hit jackpot city where I'm like, damn, if I like made, if this was an everyday thing, I'd become a millionaire, but yeah. it's not an everyday thing. Let's yeah. Just yeah. Be well, honest. you get better with time and like you yeah. realize what places are good and then your time becomes more valuable because you know to go to certain thrift stores on certain days, but don't be afraid to leave a thrift store with nothing. Don't force yourself to buy something if it's crap. Especially if the and, thirst like 20, 30 minutes, you're like, this sucks. Yeah. Like just move on. Exactly. And, and if you've been there for 20 minutes, check your scans. If you've only scanned 20 books, that's your fault. What do you mean by check your scans? What does that mean? On Scout IQ. You can swipe over to the right and see how many books you scanned. Good tip. And yep. make sure that you're actually like, if, if you're like mentally like, this is not worth it, take a step back, look at the data. How many books did you actually scan and how many did you accept? And if you scanned 50 books, you didn't do anything. But if you scan a couple hundred and got nothing, maybe they are pretty bad. So this is a good question. What's a good accept rate for folks? What I mean is if you scan a thousand books and you're at a thrift store, Goodwill, Sol Salvation, Savers, wherever you are, mom and pop, consignment, Pawn shop, by the mm -hmm. way, good for DVDs, not really books. But um, what's a good acceptance rate? Honestly, I think anything over 3% is pretty good. So that means every 100 books, you might only get three. So so do the math. How is that worthwhile for someone? Why should they not just be working a minimum wage job again? No right, offense, but I'm right. just saying, like, why be doing this? So if you scan 100 books per hour and you find three per hour and each book 
makes you around four bucks, let's say, after all costs, you're making $12 an hour. What if you can scan three times as fast? You should be able to scan at least 300 books per hour, which would bring you up to $36 per hour. And that's with low-end books. Low, we usually yeah. don't mess with low-end books like exactly. that. Exactly, 3% we're talking about. Now let's up those numbers and say you're able to scan 500 per hour and you're able to accept 5%. You can easily be making $100 plus per hour and this is extremely doable. So. And, and guess what? The first three we've talked about so far, I mean, really friends, family, and your house is actually a really good one, but yeah. I would say thrift stores especially is the easiest, lowest barrier to entry. You're going to have the most competition. I just feel like thrift stores are great to get started, but you want to you want to level up from there over time. Yeah. It's just any and everybody and everybody's mom, including Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. My mom, like, my mom lives next to like the biggest used bookstore in America, McKay's used bookstore. So my mom literally has like fresh inventory all day. Yeah. Oh man. But my mom's not very aggressive. So like when they bring up the new books, she's not like running over there. Yeah. My mom needs a little bit more of that stool energy where she just goes up and puts <laughs> the stool down. It starts. She's got that stool energy. She needs that stool if energy. If you ever see someone with a stool <laughs> at your local thrift store, don't mess with yeah, them. They're right? not playing around. Okay, cool. So we talked about friends, family in your house. We talked about the next door app. We talked about thrift stores. Let's talk about library sales. Now, the last one is something I'm really excited to share with you guys about. I'll, I'll show Avery a little sneak peek. That'll be the last one. Oh, but yeah. let's talk about library sales. I'll be honest with you, with everybody. Uh, when it comes to library sales, I, I don't have a ton of experience. I've gone to them, mm -hmm. but I think this should really be your area because okay. you used to go crazy. I mean, I yeah, know some yeah. websites. I can give some tips, but... You're the expert when it comes to this. Yeah, so first of all, go to booksalefinder.com. You'll see a list of all the library sales in your region. So you'll see all the library sales in Tennessee. You'll see all the library sales in the South. Mm. It's worth traveling to cities for these library sales, but it's only worth it if you show up on time. So, well, I got some new ads on there. That's interesting. So what you want to do is buy a membership to every library sale you go to because the membership always allows you to get early access. So you're going to become a member of the Friends of the Library. Mm. So this allows you to get early access, plus you'll get emails as time goes on. So put all the library sales that are up, up and coming in your calendar. So you want all the library sales in your calendar. You want to show up on time. And then when you get in there, my opinion is go straight for the textbooks. That's got to be where everyone's going. Though. Yeah, go straight for the... T or that's There's a reason for that. They're the most profitable books. So I... I know some people, I think Mike says he likes to go for other categories. Is it Mike or somebody likes to go for other categories? I prefer to go for the most money, which is the textbooks. So when you go in, get there early, go straight for the textbooks. And then after that, anything that's weird, nonfiction. But do you bring like a cart or something? How do you wheel all these books around? Like what's the best strategy? My, my favorite combination back in the day was if you go to Home Depot, you can get a collapsible dolly. I would get mm -hmm. a dolly and I would stack two boxes of books on it. And then if you fill up two boxes of books at a library sale, if you're selective, that's a lot. But I would usually fill up like five or six. What do they usually charge for books at a library sale? Anywhere from two to three dollars to twenty-five cents sometimes. So and usually the last day of the sale, they'll drop the prices to twenty-five cents. So but really like the money's getting there early. See, the one I went to, I don't know if you ever heard the story when I it was my first library sale I went to yeah, and I went to me, grab like, a book out. and this guy said F you and he like cussed me out and I'm like, is yeah. this guy like not like me from YouTube? I always have to be, I don't know yeah, who's yeah. watching so like I didn't do anything. Right. Plus he was twice my size but you know, uh, I don't got the, the Dude, wrestling they, moves like you man they, with they, his cauliflower ears. They get crazy man. <laughs> these, these library sales get crazy like. Uh, People are aggressive. Yeah, in New Jersey like man, they were they were like knocking over textbooks and like people like they it, the adults just turned into kids and i'm like oh, i was animals. 20 i was 23 or 24 at the time and i'm like there's like 56 year old women and men like pushing each other oh and, like, yeah they're not leaving yeah. yeah yeah so um but they were charging 10 11 12 bucks for a book and i was shocked okay yeah that was that, that blew my mind yeah. if that was a normal thing and don't be afraid to pay 10 dollars for a book if it makes you 50 dollars and it sells oh, yeah. good like like don't like that's a big mistake booksellers make because we're economical and we're frugal, we're cheap, you know, but don't be afraid to spend 10, 20, 30, $50 on a book. If you spend $50 on a book that makes you 150, buy it all day. Yeah. You know, I was at the library sale in New Jersey and at the very end, this is what happens. Everyone leaves at the same time. What you should do is stick around, scan all the non-barcode books, oh. scan the children's section and then find sets of books. So the no children's section, really? Yeah. Children's section is good. Um, a lot because a lot of people don't scan it. Like a lot of people are like, "Oh, this is worth." I've sold some pretty weird child children 
children's books. And I'm like, that's worth 40 bucks. Yeah. You'll, you'll scan a paper thin children's book yeah. and it'll be worth 40 it's bucks. It's rare profit. for some reason. Yeah. So uh, I, I found a set of books in the corner and I did the manual search on Amazon. Found it was going for two thousand dollars. Everybody else was leaving the library. Is that still. the Jewish set you're talking the about? The Jewish set, oh, yeah. You, he loves talking about this Jewish set. It's that's my biggest. Are you even Jewish? It's my no, I'm not. I you're am, Jewish I'm half though. Jewish. I, I probably sold it to. It should have been my book. I man. probably sold it to your synagogue. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody bought it at Amazon Prime. They needed it the next day. I had to have it. But uh, yeah, I mean, like sp- <laughs> waste not waste your time, but uh, wait when you're at library sales. Wait till the very end, and everyone's gonna leave at once. Don't don't be a sheep. Don't follow the herd. Stay behind and scan, you know, all the leftover stuff. Do the manual lookups. There's so much money at library sales. You can make thousands of dollars. And if you can just go to normal libraries too, you don't even have to go to sales. Like where I live in my town, they have a library sale going on like all the time. Yeah. So there's ongoing library sales and then there's like big, big library sales yeah. that only happen like once a year or once every couple months. So, and also don't just go to library sales on booksalefinder.com. Library sales on booksalefinder.com are going to be very competitive call all your libraries up and make a point to go to the library sales that are not on booksalefinder.com because yeah. those library sales are gonna have less yeah. competition and uh, sometimes you'll be the only person in a library sale. Like you'll be the only scanner. So if you find a library sale that's not advertised on Book Sale Finder and you're the only person there, like yeah. don't be surprised if you leave with like 30 boxes of oh, books. Oh yeah, yeah. It's insane. Oh, I've done that at my local, at my local library. I did that yeah. one time and it was just, it was insane. Yeah. It's called a honey hole. You hit a jackpot. It's exactly. jackpot city, but it's it's once in a while, and that's what makes this business fun. Yeah. You will strike out. You will have times you want to quit. There'll, there'll be times you want to give up. You'll have times where you're like, I don't know if this is for me. Yep. But it's those highs and it's those yep. jackpots, you exactly. know. So um, okay, cool. So we we covered friends, family, sourcing from your house in the beginning, thrifting, uh, library sales next door. And then this last one I want to share. This one's close to my heart because this is how I source most of my inventory now. Um now, I do want to say this is a bit more advanced. It will require more capital, more skills, more training. Um, what are your thoughts on what I'm going to share? And I'll, I'll Yeah, say- yeah. I mean, like, definitely, I would recommend make sure that you know how to flip an item. Like, prove to yourself that you kind of understand e-score, sales rank. Have some sales already. Yeah, profitability and stuff like that. You understand the Amazon fees. And then this is like, this is a great method. So what I do, and some of you folks may already know if you've been following me for a while, I buy items off of ebay.com and I sell them on Amazon FBA. Now, I started with books. I don't do as many books now because there's so many other products. I, I flip DVDs. I flip electronics. I flip tools. A lot I flip of stuff. Puzzles, You're just showing me beforehand. Video games. I, I sold some engine turbine or something. I don't even know what it was. We were yeah, looking yeah. for some wholesale suppliers afterwards. Two wholesales away, but not in the beginning. Um, So we buy everything from ebay.com. So um, there's a whole method that uh, that I teach that I do. I actually have a free web class if folks are interested. I guess maybe you can put a link. We can put a link down below for folks. Go through that. It's a 90 minute a 90 minute training. It'll literally share um, some of the softwares I use. I have an advanced software that I use. I don't own it, but uh, I have a whole method to the madness. So if you want to be able to source items like books, DVDs, board games, video games, all types of freaking items Mm -hmm. from home without leaving your house. If you want to just show up to your house, throw it in a box, ship it to FBA. You see it, man, in the garage. And we'll be showing it when I do my, uh, we do our listing video with GoTo. We'll show them your profits too. So they know it's real. He's doing like 50K, uh, he's doing 50K sales a month, but he's doing like 12 to to 15K profit. So yeah, so definitely check that out. But uh, just know if you're, you know, I talked to a lot of folks who message me and, you know, my mom had, she's had two surgeries on her knees. Um, I have a lot of followers and fans and people who follow she me. She didn't who, use a stool? No. <laughs> there's already a stool man there. If, if she comes up with a stool, there's going to be like a, a, a stool battle to the death. <laughs> but um, you can do this from home. Like I have people who follow me and they're like, Steve, you know, I'm, I'm disabled. I have health conditions. I have issues. Yep. You don't have to go thrifting. Um, obviously, you're only going to be able to source so much from your house. Library sales, you know, it's uh, it's a lot of energy and effort. And comp- I don't, I personally don't like library sales. There's, me, they're stressful. It gives me anxiety. Uh, I'll tell you that they're stressful, but uh, yeah. it's like, a, what's the best way to explain? It's like a pinata of like books. Like everyone's like hitting it and then when the candy bust open, everyone's trying to grab. It's literally like that. There's probably a better analogy. <laughs> like an Easter egg hunt yeah, or something. Everyone's freaking Every, yeah, everyone's just drugs. grabbing it. <laughs> yeah, you, you see 
grown adults act like children. You know, it gives so. me anxiety too. Going to the Goodwill outlets, the Goodwill. Bins, yeah, it's same, same exact, it's the same thing. Same I, I call it like a bunch of animals in the jungle just yeah. fighting over. Like it's ridiculous. You know what's so silly though? It's like if they just posted on next door, they would get better quality books. But like yeah. instead, their minds like. It's like yeah. a piranha. It's like, oh, the piranhas smell. The other piranhas going after blood. So it's like, I gotta get to the library yeah. still too. And it's like, dude, if you just breathe for a second, post on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, next door, you'll have an unlimited supply yeah. of books that are more profitable. So make sure to do the other stuff we said too. Like, don't just get caught up on library sales. Um, and try all these techniques. You know, when I used to go to the bookstore, I would scan a book, and I didn't know about eBay to Amazon, but I would see the book was going for really cheap on Amazon.com. If I could buy it in the bookstore for six dollars and make a profit selling it for, I don't know, thirty dollars on Amazon, I would see that somebody else was selling it for like three or four dollars on Amazon and I would buy it from the Amazon seller. This is kind of like a complicated technique. Joji talks more about this, you talk more about this, but I would buy it from the Amazon seller, ship it to my house. So I bought one at the bookstore, oh, yeah. one from the Amazon seller, and then I would sell both of them on Amazon because some people just price their books far too cheap. And kind of like eBay to Amazon harps on that. Like people are selling items way too cheap on eBay. You can buy those items and flip them on Amazon for, for massive profit. And the crazy thing is like, and you've sold books before on eBay, like things just don't sell as well. Like I'm not saying you can't make a ton of money. Like I used to have a full-time business selling just clothing on eBay. Yeah. I did that. I was doing six to $8,000 a month. Yep. But things don't sell super well. And, and, and eBay sellers are like, a lot of them are suffering now with the algorithm and stuff. Mm -hmm. So if you make an offer, a best offer, negotiate in multiple quantities. Let's I help mean, those eBay sellers out and buy some of their items and honestly, looking for a profit on we, Amazon. We purchased over a thousand <laughs> items last month from eBay mm -hmm. and I'd have to leave my freaking house. Yeah. Obviously it's not for everyone. It, it, it takes more capital, more experience, yeah. but just know if you're like, oh, I don't want to be doing books because I'm going to be stuck at thrift stores and library sales my whole life. And maybe you got some bad knees or you had surgery mm -hmm. or disabled. Trust me, there's a lot more like this is the reason we put out this book selling workshop is it's the best way to get started. Yeah. And books is a stepping stone to DVDs and electronics. And next thing you know, you're doing yep. wholesale. You could be creating your own products. So Retail arbitrage, online arbitrage. It's crazy. So yeah. um, I think that's all we've got for the five tips. If you guys want to learn more about sourcing, if you want to learn more about leveling up, definitely check out Reselling Freedom. We'll put some links down below. Check out you know, our social media, our YouTube channel, our Facebook groups. We're here to help you and support you. But the next video, this is where it all comes together, okay? So in day number five, do you want to tell them what we're going to be doing? Yeah, we'll be going over how to get your books active on Amazon as quickly as possible, how to price your books for as much profit as possible, get the books out the door so they can start selling so you can start getting money in your bank account. Yeah, and what we're going to be sharing with you, some of you folks may have watched uh, my older workshop that was shot in I think 2020 or so. I it, did things way slower back then. Yep. Way, way slower. Way it's slower. Not just because of GoTo Lister. Obviously yeah, yeah. that's helped a lot. I'm just being transparent. Yep. I had a crappy printer. Yep. I had a crappy cyst. It just you, you you've optimized your I've whole optimized. you found the best I've made printer. I've made mistakes. And we've all been through this. I've used the Dymo printers. I've used, you know Dude, don't the, don't I, don't get me in a bad mood. Yeah. I, I know some people love Dymos. I want to freaking take a baseball bat to, to my Dymos. Yeah, you should sell your Dymos on Amazon. They actually go for decent oh, they profits. Do. Yeah. yeah, those are actually a good eBay to Amazon flip, but yeah, yeah. I won't say anything about that. But yeah, let's get ready to rock and roll. See you for day number five. Much love. Talk to you soon. Peace out, guys. <laughs>